Hi guys, welcome back to the Hugh Jeffries video and in this video I'm going to be restoring this destroyed iPhone 6 back into brand new condition using all new parts. This is by far the worst condition iPhone 6 I've ever seen. With a completely smashed screen, many drop marks, dints and big scratches throughout. I'm unaware of the history of this iPhone, although it's clearly been mistreated. This iPhone 6 will be completely overhauled with a new housing, screen and battery, as well as some other smaller parts. This phone was purchased from eBay for $30 as non-functional and iCloud and network locked, although after an IMEI check before I purchased the device, it showed that there was no iCloud account tethered to the iPhone. So I went ahead and purchased this and took the chance that this board inside is actually matching the housing on this phone. Pulling it out, you can see all the damage to the phone as well as the numbers 46. Um, and I have no idea what that means. Attempting to power the phone on, I got the battery flat sign. I tried to charge it and left it for about half an hour, although the phone still didn't power on. So I decided to open up the phone and chuck in a test battery that I know has some charge in it to see if I can get the phone to power on. So at first I thought this could be the entire reason why this phone was thought to be iCloud locked, as it didn't power on so they just kind of assumed that it would be locked. It also was noted in the description that the home button didn't work and trying to press on it, it just kind of feels like nothing's there or nothing's clicking on it. Opening up the phone, you can see the battery has a giant X mark on it, which is never a good sign and sort of means that this battery has been put in here because it doesn't work. So it's been taken out of a device that's clearly, uh, you know, this battery's known to be bad, but has been installed into this phone, which is not looking good for me when you've just purchased this phone and it's got a giant X in there and, you know, that battery's been planted in there. It was held down by a small bit of adhesive, not the original stuff, and underneath that there's a giant piece of text that says LOCK. It's underlined, so that wasn't looking good. So I chucked the battery in here, and at this point I was thinking that maybe the logic board had been swapped from a different phone to one with an unlocked IMEI number on the back to make it appear to be unlocked. When the phone powered on, it was running iOS 9.3.2 and was passcode locked. I tried some passcodes to try and guess it, um, but eventually it went to the connect to iTunes screen and I had no choice but to restore the phone to iOS 12. Now I couldn't restore any other version of iOS because Apple signs them and basically prevents you from installing an older version of iOS. So I was stuck with iOS 12, which really sucks, but I got the oldest version that I possibly could that would install at that time, which was iOS 12.0.1. After the restore had completed, I was greeted with the hello screen, but like I said before, the home button didn't work, so I wasn't able to get into the phone. Now I could easily get around that by simply powering off the phone and turning it back on. Now sometimes this takes a few tries, but eventually you just don't get that hello screen and it boots right up into the setup. Then I could make sure that the phone wasn't locked and it activated just fine and had no iCloud on the device. I could then continue with the setup and we were into the phone. And you can see going into settings, this is a 16 gigabyte on iOS 12.0.1. Now that I could confirm that the phone is unlocked and working, I can restore this into brand new condition. To do that, I'll need a new housing, which contains all of the small parts already installed, a new battery, a new refurbished display. Under iOS 12, the battery was rated at 81% health, whereas in Coconut, battery was giving me 65, but in 3U tools, it was around that 80% mark as well. So I don't really know what to believe with that test battery, but I will be installing a brand new one so we can get the best battery life out of this iPhone. Starting things off, I can disassemble this iPhone and transfer the necessary parts over to the new housing. I'll have to remove the battery and display from this iPhone as they're not going to be needed anymore as they are cracked and damaged. Once they're removed, I can take a closer look at the display as we'll need to take some of those things off later. You can see there that the home button doesn't even have the backing plate that goes behind it and is exactly why the home button doesn't work. The button itself is functional, although it isn't originally from this iPhone, so Touch ID doesn't function, but the reason it's not clicking is because that plate is missing, which is kind of strange. So now that I've figured out what's wrong with the home button, that doesn't need to be replaced. It just needs to be repaired. Now I can remove the rest of the components from the old LCD, which I'll need to transfer over to the new one so we can have full functionality. When removing the heat shield, be careful because there is a cable on the 6 which connects to the home button as you don't want to rip that. With everything now removed, I can take out the new LCD and get that prepped for installation later on. 
If you are doing this at home, be careful not to damage that home button as if you replace it you won't get Touch ID back as Apple are the only ones that can pair the Touch ID sensor to the iPhone. With newer iPhones from the iPhone 7 and above, you're not able to replace that button and contain any home button functionality, which greatly affects repairs on iPhones that contain home buttons. And you're probably asking yourself, why is this? And that is purely because Apple wants you to purchase a newer iPhone. They don't want you fixing them because that doesn't give them any money. If you, especially if you're fixing it yourself, they're not getting anything. So they want you to take that upgrade and not be repairing your phones yourself, which I find extremely wasteful considering how many things are thrown out these days. And is exactly why I do what I do, fixing up phones just like this. Now I can install the new home button bracket which was previously missing and that was it for the display. Now I can move on to removing the logic board and camera from the old housing and transfer those over to the new one. Now the housing I purchased, which cost me $30, came with all of the components already installed in it, which means it's gonna be a lot easier and quicker to transfer across the parts I need. Now the reason I didn't go with a bare unit is they're roughly around the same price and require a lot more work and don't come with any of the parts you actually need and then you run that risk of damaging uh, parts when removing them of course. So it's just easier to get a whole new housing with all new parts um, and the dock connector was looking quite dirty uh, anyway. I can use those parts in this housing later down the track for a different phone but for this one I wanted to restore it into brand new condition. As you can see this is the iPhone 6 logic board removed from the housing. Now I can install it into the new housing like I said, it has most of those parts already installed, which is a lot more easier than installing everything yourself. Now you want to make sure to install this little cable that connects uh, from the logic board itself up into the camera module. I'm not quite sure what that does, although a lot of people leave that out when doing housing replacements, so just make sure that you transfer that across as well. Now with the camera installed, there's only one piece I need to install before we can test out this phone, and that is the Wi-Fi antenna. Now there's actually sort of two pieces to the Wi-Fi antenna. There's like those cables that run on the underneath side of the logic board, and there's this little plastic thing that sits up in the top left corner, which you need to make sure to screw in correctly. Once you've got that in, you can just reinstall the bracket which covers over the cable connectors, and then I can just reconnect everything back up uh, for the dock connector and antenna and reinstall that last screw holding the logic board in and I can attach a battery and a display. You want to make sure to connect the display before the battery because you don't want to fry anything connecting up those connectors and short anything out. Plugging it in nothing happened which wasn't very good so I reconnected the connectors on the LCD just to make sure they were connected properly and I got a whole heap of squiggly lines which wasn't good either so disconnecting the battery and cleaning out those connectors with some air Time to reconnect everything once again and I was still getting lines. I got the phone to boot up relatively good but I was still getting a whole heap of lines and the whole right side of the touchscreen wasn't functioning. Now this has happened multiple times to me and usually happens when I replace the battery. I believe this is a static issue but I'm not entirely sure. This could just be a loose connection on the LCD as I did just disconnect it a few times um, and actually just went away and the whole touchscreen came back. The display no longer had any lines, um, but I had had a case of a 5S that I replaced the battery in and not the display or anything and it came up with all these lines. After disconnecting the battery, reconnecting it, letting it charge, it totally fixed itself and the lines never came back. It's very strange and like I said, I believe it's a static issue. Now. I managed to get it to function just fine in the end um, and I was able to reassemble the device. It takes a little bit if you get this, um, so don't freak out too much. It can also be the display if you damage the cable, but in this case, I believe it was just a bit of static electricity. And that could either come from me or even the battery itself because obviously the battery holds a charge. Could be something to do with that, I'm not entirely sure, like I said. Either way, now that I can confirm that the display was working both in having no lines and the touch is functioning, I could install the battery by gluing it into place. After the battery was glued in place, it was time to install the last two brackets, one which goes over the battery and the other one which goes on top of the LCD connectors. Unfortunately, it was missing one screw and another screw was too long, so I pulled out my donor iPhone 6, which had some screws for those spots, which I could transfer over so this phone had a complete screw set. 
With everything now functioning, I can clean the inside of the phone and seal everything back up. Inserting the SIM tray and reinstalling the two pentalobe screws into the bottom of the iPhone, I could then remove the plastic film from the display to reveal the new glass. I will put a screen protector on that, but for the meantime, we're done. And this is it, the fully restored to brand new condition iPhone 6 that I picked up for $30 and I spent a total of $90 on this iPhone, which even in today's standards isn't too bad for an iPhone 6, especially one in brand new condition. Although it doesn't have the Touch ID, which is a bit of a shame, and it is on iOS 12, it is fully functional, and like I said, those lines did go away um, and haven't come back. Now the battery is at 100% health, so it is perfect and you're going to be getting the best battery life out of this phone as possible um, and we won't be experiencing any slowdowns. This phone is basically looking like any other brand new iPhone so we took a completely smashed destroyed iPhone 6 and we've turned that thing back into brand new condition all for $90 and that includes the phone and all the parts needed to restore this to brand new condition. And on that note, this has been a Hugh Jeffries video. If you like what you saw, hit that subscribe button and consider checking out the phone restoration playlist for more videos just like this one. Also, make sure you're following me on my social media. Link will be down in the description. That's all for this video, and I'll catch you guys next time.